Piezoelectricity is a property of matter where pressure, piezo means pressure, elicited through the substance that creates a mechanical stress or deforms the substance generates an electrical charge. I know it's a mouthful, so I'm gonna say it again. Piezoelectricity is a property of matter where pressure elicits an electrical charge in the substance. What this means is that if you have a, an object and there is pressure being put on it or a torque to it, something that causes mechanical force to be elicited through this substance, an electrical charge gets generated within it. This property shows up in a lot of different substances on the planet. Um, one that is always interesting is quartz crystal is piezoelectric. Um, I've actually heard if you smash two quartz crystals together, they generate a spark due to this property. Uh, some polymers are piezoelectric, and as you have probably guessed where I'm going, collagen is also a piezoelectric substance. So what this means is that when force gets elicited and transmitted through collagen, a charge gets generated within that, that, that tissue. Now, first of all, this is interesting because usually when we think about electricity in the body, we think about the nervous system. We think about the, the you know, like the nerve impulses, like that, that system of electricity. This is different. This is a different, a different tissue in the body that is also generating its own electrical impulse, but it's doing so from a very different mechanic, and it's literally from a mechanical, mechanical cause. Now, take this with what we talked about before, that fascia is, is, is a tissue which, at its most basic function, transfers force from one structure to another. That means that there is, whenever that force is being transferred through fascia, there is also being, being generated an, an electrical impulse within this tissue. When we talk about the myofascial system, we're talking about the collagen, uh, the collagen tissues that have this piezoelectric quality, and also the myo part of it, the muscles, that are creating this force and pulling on or torquing the collagen, fat, the, the collagen matrix. So if you weren't aware of this, your collagen is basically always eliciting and generating a little bit of a, of a hum of electricity at basically every given point in time. Um, there's two real reasons that this, this, this happens on an ongoing basis. Uh, one, like I mentioned, is muscle activity. As muscles contract, they pull on the periosteum. The periosteum is, an, is part of the collagen matrix and that creates this piezoelectric charge. And the other one is gravity. If you live on a planet with gravity, we live under the weight of gravity pushing down on our bodies and we have to stand up against it. And the effort of doing that against that pressure creates this, this physical stress on our whole body, in particular our bones, that creates this piezoelectric charge. You might have seen astronauts coming off the space shuttle before, and I'm going somewhere with this. When they come off the space shuttle, they're often being wheeled off in wheelchairs because they have been living in zero gravity for a period of time. And they also, as they are living on the space station, they have to work out like constantly using these like hydraulic weightlifting systems because without that pressure of gravity, they don't get this piezoelectric charge going through their fascial system in the same way that we do on the planet. And this causes problems. This causes a loss of bone density. Why is this? Well, one of the, the things that we see when we, when we look at what this piezoelectric charge does in the body is it does essentially two very important things. When you get this charge, it's going to inhibit, if, if we're talking about bone, inhibit the osteoclasts. It's going to inhibit the cells that degrade bony tissue. If we have this charge, it's going to promote and stimulate osteoblasts. In a nutshell, the presence of a piezoelectrical charge through the collagen matrix stimulates the production of tissue. With bone, of course, we call this osteoblasts and osteoclasts. With collagen in general, we call it fibroblasts and fibroclasts. So what we see is the, the generation of this electrical charge laying down tissue. Okay, so why is this neat? I mean, maybe that already is neat. It's not random. It's not like it just starts pouring cement and concrete. Again, I mentioned that fascia and all collagen has a grain and a fiber composition to it. And so when you have a force vector going through a collagen structure, the, the way in which the tissue is laid down is it's being laid down to resist and support that particular pattern of force, that particular vector of, of force transmission going through the system. 
So take a femur, for instance. A femur is a long bone that we, we use to stand upright. Because, again, of gravity and how we use our legs, the force going through the femur creates a charge going longitudinally along the bone, so the fibers are going to develop, the, the, the actual bony tissue will develop to resist this force vector. Not so much horizontally. If you wanted to have your bones be very, very strong horizontally, you could basically uh, suspend your legs and lie like a cinder block on them for, for you know, days at a time, and eventually it would start to generate bony tissue to resist that, that force vector, but that's what it would take. This piezoelectric charge generates tissue to support and resist the force vector of the, of the physical pressure. To say that again, because I know that's a, that's a bit of a, a headful or a mouthful, the piezoelectric charge generates tissue to support the vector of force that's eliciting the pressure. Okay, so the clinical implications of this are very interesting. This sounds like a good thing, and generally speaking, it's a good thing, but there's a dark side to it in that it will support whatever the force vector happens to be. So if we live in a way where we are always eliciting force through our body in a way that is good for our joints and good for our tissues and good for our organs, then our fascial system will generate tissue to support this and make that more efficient and more fluid and more coordinated. But if we don't get all stressed out and we carry our backpacks and we do all the things that we do, that force vector gets reinforced. Over time, the repeated strain of habitual, of habitual pressure changes in the body will, will make it so that the, the actual collagen matrix, remember our organ of form, becomes physically structured to support that movement or that posture. This is why, of course, at the late stages of a lot of holding patterns, we, we see thing, we, we see a, like a literal thickening of the collagen matrix to support that particular posture. And at the and in the most advanced stages of this, this, this physically changes bone morphology. The bones themselves will change their shape to support that force vector. And why? It's more efficient. It's more energy efficient to have that position held by collagen, which is a lot more stable and it requires less energy to hold things together than muscle does. So this is important because a lot of times, again, just to circle back to the difference between orthopedic acupuncture techniques and what we're talking about here, when we see a patient that is stuck in one particular holding pattern and they seem to be stuck in that position, you can think of this as having almost like two components that may be present to one degree or another. If it's a, a, a fresh holding pattern, it's probably more neurological. It's probably more due to the actual signaling in the muscle tissue holding the shoulders forward or holding the neck forward or something like this. But over time, the body will adapt to this and make it so that the actual the actual collagen that surrounds the muscles and reinforces them and supports the skeleton becomes organized in its fiber composition to support that shape. And at that point, you could, you could stimulate the motor points as much as you want, but it, it's, like, it's like trying to wake an animal that's in a cage and telling it to run away. It's not, it, it's not able to, it's physically bound in by the structural support. This process happens due to, the, due to the, the property of fascia called piezoelectricity. As this, this force is introduced into the system, it stimulates a physical change in that system over time.